God that you weren't picking at through that period when they were in coat. But if they've got a, a good coat and you've got the time and expertise, you can literally keep them in coat for years. Uh, I, with Flirt, had her in coat from the time she was three months old until she was retired at eight, and that included through four litters of puppies. Now, granted, when she was taking care of puppies, what I would do, and that's an interesting thing to point out, if you've got a bitch that you want to breed, and God help you, I hope you do. I mean, what's good a, a beautiful show bitch if she can't reproduce? Um, what you can do, you don't want to be showing a pregnant bitch too far into her pregnancy. It's not good for them. But uh, they come in season, you breed them, you've already got them entered in some shows, so you know, for a couple of weeks, yeah, you go ahead and judges are good, they're acting okay, you show them. Then, as soon as you know they're pregnant, and uh, Lakeland's either with modern ultrasound or good hands, you can go in there at 25 days and you can feel the puppies. They're going to be, at 25 days, they're going to be about yay big. And by 30 days, they're going to be about yay big. And then they're going to get diffuse and you're not going to be able to feel them anymore. So your window is 25 to 30 days as a rule. And as soon as you know they're pregnant, you take their furnishings and you trim them tight. Not take them all off, but this is a dog you've been showing right along. So this hair is very active. You trim those furnishings tight. Just trim them down. You take their coat off. Their coat's probably going to be, even a good coat is going to be opening up a bit because of the season and being bred and everything. And so you take off what will come off easily. You're not stripping them to the skin, but you take off what will come off easily. And then you just keep working that coat. Uh, one thing you do want to do, as soon as you know they're in whelp, strip their sides down close because as they get more pregnant, that area, uh, particularly through the loin, gets very sensitive and you don't want to be pulling a lot of hair there. Uh, so, you know, trim this part well. Also, as soon as you know they're pregnant, take this brisket coat off because the puppies are going to be nursing. This coat's going to go to rat shit anyway. Uh, so you don't need to take it all off. Again, this is moderation. The breed's moderate, the trimming's moderate. Take off all the long stuff. You're going to be left with coat maybe about yay long. And the puppies are going to split up that hair around the nipples and they're going to be fine. Uh, trim down their butt and under here nice and short so that they're clean having their puppies. And then you let them have, and you keep working this coat then as needed. You know, you're not get, being quite so uh, paranoid about it as when they're in the show ring, but you don't want to lose touch with the coat. Uh, then the puppies are born and I use uh, a very light conditioner on the furnishings so that as the puppies are messing around in there, they're not going to be sucking up a bunch of mane and tail or something like that. Uh, but likewise, you've got something to protect the furnishings as they're starting to grow back in now. And again, as you get long, wispy hairs, you're trimming it off. But you're not having you're not spending hours and hours on them. Don't worry about, oh, I want the bitch to tighten up real fast, so I'm gonna wean the puppies when they're three weeks old. Not gonna help, guys. 
don't be tempted. Oh, you could get to put stuff on the breasts and it's going to dry up their milk. Mother Nature does a much better job. If the bitch is a good mama and wants to stay with her babies, let her. Let her stay with the babies. Uh, the only thing you need to be careful about as they start to get their teeth, if they're roughhousing with their mom and they're grabbing whiskers, and some of them will, they'll start doing that uh, five, six weeks, and they'll be hanging off their mother's whiskers, then you got to start being careful because they'll pull all her face hair out in short order. But let her go in and nurse the puppies and then take her away. Uh, I let them clean her out a couple of times a day, right up until about they're six weeks old, before I really <laughs> seriously wean them. They'll tighten up a lot faster doing that than they will if you try and hasten the process. Uh, with my vixen bitch, my carnation bitch, she had puppies on America's Thanksgiving, which is the last Thursday in November, and she won the breed at the garden, and she had five puppies. Now, you look at the pictures of her, and yeah, her she wasn't quite as tight yet, but her coat and furnishings and stuff were gorgeous. So, and I did the same thing with Flirt throughout her career because she was always back in the ring within, by the time her puppies were, were 10 or 12 weeks old. And uh, she had litters, uh, well, two, three, four, and five puppies in her four litters. So uh, if the bitch is structurally sound and is going to hold her top line and all that kind of stuff, you can keep them with work going. So we digress. What time are we? So if you're willing to go over this coat and just take a little off, you're going to start breaking into this coat. And it's going to be a whole lot easier on everybody, particularly her, you see, past that, that's all. But you're doing that every day. It takes you 15 minutes to go over the whole dog, maybe another 15, 30 minutes to do all her flat work, and you're done. And so by the time you've been peeling off that much hair every day, by the time this coat begins to open up, and you take off that top coat, and you've got a layer of fuzz underneath it and a bunch of just kind of ratty looking hair, leave it. Come back two weeks later. Take off some of the ratty stuff. Come back two weeks later. When I do, when I strip a dog first week of August for Montgomery, then through August, I'm going to be focused on getting flat work going and making sure my furnishings are where I, they need to be. I'm not going to pay a whole lot of attention to this other than to brush it, soft bristle brush or hound glove, and gently but thoroughly stimulate the skin and the natural oils as that coat's starting to activate. <laughs> oh, you're not sneaking up to the edge of that table. Uh, and end of August, before, do you guys have Labor Day up here in early September? Anything that's on the surface on the body coat, and even if it looks like, hey, wow, I'm getting some good coat here. I'm going to start watching. This is good stuff. I'm going to hang on to this. No. Everything that will come off within reason, the end of August, first week of September, take it all off because it is not going to last. It's not going to serve you any purpose. <laughs> and it's been a month since you stripped her out. So you've got this hair here that's come through that was from all this kind of work that you'd been doing. And now you're going to have this rolling coat coming. But don't 
start to do it with just this half a coat that's in there from when you stripped her out in the first place. That's useless. So then if you've been doing your stuff, you take all of that off and they're going to be covered with velvet kind of like their ears. They're going to have a short coating of uh, undercoat and they're going to have that new coat that's just beginning to break through. And you're going to get to the middle of September and that coat's going to be about that long and you're going to be freaking out. You're going to say, they're never going to have enough hair. I should have done it sooner. That woman's an idiot. Have you heard this? I have to take that from you. <laughs> Keep brushing and pick off any straight hair, stray hairs. Keep working your flat work, working your furnishings. And I guarantee you, unless they've got some kind of a metabolic problem, come that first week of October. And you're going to be able to get them out the week before. They may be a little short of coat, but you know, you want to get their feet wet again and they're going to look pretty dandy. And then you start working that coat and you're going to take them through the show season. And then if you need to, around the holidays, you top them off and they're going to be ready again come garden time. So, uh, so essentially, you don't have a rolling coat. Well, when you do if, this process. if you if that's the Goodbye. go to mommy. <laughs> uh, if that's the way you're going to work it, if you're not going to, but you can develop a rolling coat doing that. If rather than try and start and make this a rolling coat by saying, "Oh well, that's really good hair. I want to save that," you're not gonna. It's already gone too far. When it comes to the schedule, when we strip the dog and, and, and we're waiting for the new hair to come in, what week do we start to roll the coat after the new hair starts to come in? And I'm, I'm not talking as... about a dog that's, that's, that, that's this, that we're going to try and save some coat. I'm talking about a dog that we're going to... As I, soon I'm as that hair to... starts to come in and you're looking at it, you say, it's perfect. I'm not going to touch a thing. Mm -hmm. You start doing that combing, stripping. And all you're doing is taking off a, a surface, and I mean surface, layer. You're not digging down into the coat. It's a very subtle approach. So we're not taking half or, or anything not like that? Not at that we're point, taking, no. We're taking probably you're taking one eighth or something. A tenth. Okay. Because uh, you, you figure it takes nine weeks from the time you pull a hair till the hair is show length. So figure if you're taking off that much each week, you want to be taking off a ninth of the coat each week. Now it's not going to come out quite that neat and tidy. And there are going to be times when they look better than others. Sometimes when the coat is going to be a little shorter, sometimes a little longer. But uh, it's going to uh, be a gradual process. Now with a puppy, when you start with a puppy and you strip out that puppy's coat, you're not I wish we had some puppies here that were like seven weeks old and then, oh, we do? Okay. Uh, we'll take a look at those after lunch and uh, show you some of the tricks about trimming puppies um, that uh, a lot's going to depend. You can learn a lot about what kind of a coat a dog's going to have by looking at puppy coats. Uh, that. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I recommended on Little Red Puppy over here that uh, is not going to be a coat that's going to be easy to work. Uh, it's, it's going to be a coat that, yes, can you get this bitch in show coat and looking nice? Yeah, but you're going to pay a heck of a price to do it, and you'd better be very good. 
be because she's got a thick coat. She's got a lot of undercoat. Very, very soft, woolly undercoat. Her outer coat is not, the, ha the individual hairs are not thick. They're not strong. And so as you try and get the undercoat out to give that top coat a chance, it's going to be very easy to damage that coat. And it's going to go frizzy on you. Uh, it's also a coat that's going to go into rather tight waves. And so, well, yeah, but that's a wavy coat that is very thick and hard as opposed to a wavy coat that's soft. <coughs> and again, you can do that combing technique on her and you can take off a discrete layer of hair. You try and do that with her and your thumb's just going to slide over it and you're not going to take any hair because the hair's going to be tightly rooted. You grab hold of it hard enough to actually pull it out and you're, unless you're very careful, you're going to cut half of it and pull half of it. And every hair you cut is going to end up that much softer when it comes back in. So uh, the only way to truly safely deal with that is to do it thumb and forefinger, not use a knife at all. And boy, you've got to be very good to trim that way on that kind of a coat. And you've got to have really strong hands. And you're going to get carpal tunnel like you wouldn't believe. Uh, I mean, you can do thumb and forefinger trimming on like the borders. They've got that kind of a coat. It's a more open coat. They don't carry the undercoat. And you can do a lot of trimming on a border, just thumb and forefinger. I do a lot of, used to do a lot more. I don't, my hands, I've got problems in the tendons in my thumb probably from trimming for years. I used to do furnishings almost all by hand. I don't anymore. I do probably half of them by hand and half of them with uh, this knife. Uh, and again, this is another knife that is brutally sharp when they're new. Uh, you've really got to dull them down before you can safely use them. But once they're dulled down, uh, it's a, a useful knife for doing furnishing, not for doing... You can use this sometimes on flat work. But again, if you think, oh, this is really cool, I really like this for flat work because I'm getting it really smooth, chances are you're cutting hair. So it's a lot safer to use this because you're going to be much less likely to cut the hair. This is a dog that is very nice coated dog uh, and he has the ease of a quite straight coat which is an easier coat to keep flat and smooth. Uh, he just has very slight wave to his coat. Um, it's not a better coat than a wavy coat. It's just easier. Uh, I'm going to ask a question about wavy coats uh, because uh, Charlie, my, my, my bitch, has, has waves. Just uh, as we're approaching the rear end, we've got really waves. And the yeah. hair's only that long. Is there any way of dealing with that? Uh, take out all the undercoat? You don't do all of anything. Okay. Get that picture out of your mind. You need undercoat to maintain the proper depth and fullness in a good coat. Uh, undercoat is not your enemy. In fact, you get Lakelands that have very little undercoat and then you can't grow furnishings. They end up looking like Irish Terriers or Borders. And uh, so the undercoat's not your enemy. The waves are, though. No. no. It, it, I mean, it's just, wrong with it. it's just what's there. Okay. It's a matter of 
rather than looking at the waves and saying, oh, damn, you look at them and say, oh, waves, all right, I need to be careful there and work with them, not against them. What I'm doing now is I'm trimming brisket coat, and I love to start trimming brisket coat when they're sitting down. Uh, if you try and trim this when they're standing up, you're going to miss a lot of it because what happens when they sit, all of this coat becomes readily apparent to you, uh, but it brings all this to the fore and you can, you're in, what I'm in essence doing now is trimming what is between his front legs when he's standing up. And it's just a much easier way to do it. And then you trim from the back forward when he's standing up. But um, he doesn't need hair that long on his brisket. No dog does. Uh, if they are so lacking in depth of chest that you've got to have three-inch hair on their brisket, then you might as well clip them because they don't belong in the show ring. And uh, those who think you can leave that hair long and angle it steeply toward the umbilicus to make a long back look shorter, all you're going to do is make them look low on leg. You're not going to shorten their back because when you're looking for length of back, you're not looking underneath the dog, you're looking on top. Uh, regardless, it is always best when you're working on furnishings to have them damp when you start, to brush through or comb through them. Uh, and you can have a, a mild light conditioner in the water uh, because it's gonna help protect the hair. You're going to lose less hair, and then you're just you're getting your conditioner in there as you're you're working the coat. Now, if you'll notice, I started by combing straight up. You're like, why are you doing that? You don't show the dog with their hair all combed up. What that's going to let you do is start trimming from the top down. So start, he's already been, you know, his, his neck and shoulders have been trimmed. And I'm going to start working down. Now, what I'm, the trimming that I'm doing now, I'm going to be shaping him as if he were going to be shown, but knowing that what I'm doing is not right now, like for next weekend, going to have him in prime condition. It's not. But when you're starting with long furnishings like these and you're trying to build up your texture, and this is true even is as you're working good furnishings that have been worked and you're just maintaining this process, it's not about, well, I'm going to take all their furnishings off. No. It's about you take off the hair that's too long leaving the hair that is closer to the right length. But it's not going to be full and pretty yet. But as you start to trim this and shape it in, and then you come back two weeks later and do the same thing, and come back two weeks later and do the same thing, and you keep doing that, then in three or four months, uh, you're going to have multiple layers that are going to hold together. Now you notice I go down, I trim a little bit, and I comb up again. Keep 
you can't comb too much. Uh, you comb twice, pull once. You know, it's like measure twice, cut once, mm -hmm. uh, because you're going to be much less likely to take out too much hair. Oh, I didn't mean to take that out. Here, put it back. Mm -hmm. No, won't work. Uh, so don't be afraid to keep combing. Um, and what I'm doing, I start down the outside of the leg, then I work, the hair tends to grow this way. So I, I, I make a pass down the side, then I start to work back, and now I'm starting to comb the hair the way it grows, and I'm trimming it, both combing it and trimming it the way it grows. And don't worry about finishing one area. Make a pass, get it more or less even, and then work around. And just keep working around the leg. Uh, but again, at this stage, the goal is not perfection. The goal is to get this process started so be willing, if you're starting with this, make one pass all the way around the leg and then leave it alone. Don't go back and comb it up again and say, ah, oh, oh, missed hair here, missed hair, and pretty soon you're not going to have anything. So at this stage, the goal is not perfection. The goal is to start building layers. No. Uh, you want to, you know, it looks like the end result, that's what it is. But in truth, it's going to be shortest here. He's got still a wad here at his elbow because that likes to stick out right here that part. So that's going to be trimmed shorter. Shorter, it's kind of in a V here that it's shorter and then tapered in here uh, so that you've got some length as you're coming around the elbow but you don't have bunches of hair here and they very often, he doesn't have much of a one but they'll very often have a cowlick there that the hair wants to stick out. But again, I'm not going to get this perfectly smooth and flat, this first trim. Uh, it, some of it's still going to be sticking out, but I've started the process. And each time you come in and do that, you're going to be getting a little better shape after the first month. And you're going to recognize that as you begin to work this, after about five or six weeks, you're going to be building some density here. And uh, as you continue to trim, you're not trimming as much each time, and you're really getting some shape. Um, and then it's shorter. It comes down, it's real short, or comparatively shorter here, it gets a little longer, a little longer, and then it starts to taper back into the foot. But you basically, on the front legs especially, you want tree trunks. But the dog's leg has shape, and so the hair's not all the same length. And because these bones here stick out a little bit, and then hollow in, this is going to be shorter. This is going to be fuller. Maybe the fake, if you want a straight line. 
You want, a, you want it in the end to be a straight line, but the hair's not all the same length to get that straight line. Well, you can't do it any other way, right? How do you mean? Well, it has to be a whole bunch of yeah. words from the side of the dog. If you're looking at the dog straight on, straight down. No, because they've got valleys, and that's where he sticks out. That needs to be filled in. Yeah. But the elbow is bigger than the bottom. So it's got to be shorter here and longer here to get yeah, the straight. And line. likewise, this area right where the elbow bends, that's got to be quite short because as the dog moves, if you've got a lot of hair here, it's going to get bunched up and it's going to be sticking out and blowing in the wind uh, as they're moving. And if you build up your layers, this hair here coming, because it grows out and around. If you've got this short, but with some density to it, it's going to hold itself together rather than all be sticking out and wispy stuff. So you don't trim here and then stop. This is short and smooth. This is short and thick. Again, the you're trying to shorten their hair. back. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And so if we have a lot of hair on the front of the leg, when the dog moves, it really disrupts the image. Yeah, because that hair is softer and thicker. Mm -hmm. uh, with so, these dogs, you get them trimmed properly, and you get these layers of hair. The hair doesn't move that much. It doesn't move nearly as much as the schnauzer does. The schnauzer, they're trotting. This hair is almost going to part and go off to each side. Yeah. These, that's not going to happen if they've got a properly groomed leg that's been built up in layers. So, uh, and I just, I just keep working around. And this is the old-fashioned way. And it's still, frankly, as long as your thumb and forefinger will hold up, it's the best way to trim furnishings. Are you pulling them up? Yeah. You, you were using the knife down, but pulling the two yep. up? What is the reason? Uh, I find it, actually, it's up and out it's easier for me to get a grip on the hair. It has nothing to do with the way the hair grows down. No. It's, uh, it's strictly easier. Uh, and this hair is not tightly rooted, so it's not uncomfortable for the dog. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very uncomfortable. <laughs> Yawn. <laughs> now, uh, an area, yes, thank you, darling, that is easy to forget about. You've got this all trimmed. You trimmed the front. You trimmed here. You trimmed back here. You got a quarter to a third of the leg under here. Don't forget it. You cannot not trim that. It's going to throw everything else out of whack. So bring it out to the side. And again, you want it in here. Um, again, you want the hair medium length half an inch, but uh, you want a fair amount of it. You don't want to hollow that out in there uh, because even if they've got a deep chest, uh, it's going to look like they're hollow chested, especially if they've got a good Lakeland front, which has a comparatively deep keel here. 
Their breadth is not through there. You want this tapering in here so that his shoulders come like that rather than like that. You don't want a lot of muscle in here. So to keep it from looking hollowed out, you do want some hair in there. It's just, it's going to look better. Otherwise, you get this hollowed out, and then you go to the longer hair, and they're going to scoop. And that is very unattractive. Plus, if you've got some hair here, it's going to let keep this in place as it works its way down. Again, uh, and we'll reiterate this when he stands up, right now I've trimmed all of this off with him sitting. When he stands up, wake up. You see it goes down. We want to take all of that off. You want a straight line down his chest right down his legs. So uh, that comes off. Now you look at this and you say, he's got too much hair there. You're right, he does. You're not going to take it off today. That's for the next trip. But you can see, even though this is not smooth and uh, nice and thick and stuff now, you've got shape, unlike this, that you've got the beginnings of shape to that leg. So beginning, it's part of an ongoing process. It's not a once and done. Then this part that I mentioned back here, and we're going to have trouble. This isn't going to show up on the video. There's no way I can turn the dog with it, kind of, to do this. But just the key is don't forget it. And you do it from back here, from underneath working from the middle back around. And if you want to come and look before it's trimmed, you'll see why it's so important to trim it when you look at it from this angle. You see that line? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Very unattractive, yeah. this line. And it's going to tend to be longest right in here. It's a dead giveaway to an amateur trim that around this little, it's called the carpal pad that marks the top of the pastern. The hair there is softer. It grows every which away. And if you don't trim it properly, the dog is going to look funny. He's going to move funny. And you are showing yourself as a dead giveaway as an amateur groomer. Uh, the best way to trim the, around that carpal pad is to hold the dog's foot in your hand, gently bend the pastern, and work from behind the dog. Do not use a sharp knife here. You will cut the hair. Use either your fingers, if they're strong enough, or a dull knife. And trim down, straight down. From all sides, because it will grow down and out. And they'll look like they're wearing snowshoes. And if you wait and say, oh, well, I'll just scissor that, you will end up with even worse cotton candy.